What's going on there, folks? Good morning. It is the Earth Master here on this Saturday, finally the weekend, October 1st, 2022. It is about 7.12 a.m. Central Time out here in the beautiful state of Texas. And uh, I know this is a pretty early update, but I uh, got a little bit of driving to do today, so I'm trying to get an update in uh, to when I'm not so busy a little bit later on today. I do have some earthquake activity to chat about this morning, including a 6.0 earthquake out here in the northern Atlantic Ocean around the uh, Rick Jane's Ridge. This area has seen quite a bit of earthquake activity over the last week or so. Uh, let's bring up the last seven days of activity in this region, and I'll kind of show you guys uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, quite the cluster. We got about 86 earthquakes of magnitude uh, 4.0 and above uh, over the last week. Now, let's see here. USGS may only be showing 4.5 and above for this area because I'm not seeing anything below. Well, there's a 4.4, but uh, there's got to be a little bit more earthquake activity in there than the uh, magnitudes that they're showing right now. Either way, I think last night's earthquake, the six-pointer, is the largest one we've seen so far. Uh, the last holder of that title was back on the 26th when we had a 5.8. So now we got a 6.0. So something definitely brewing, something definitely uh, getting much, much more active out here. And um, uh, this this fault system out here, plate boundary, is a uh, it's a pretty hot, a pretty good hot spot for activity. Uh, it's a divergent boundary, spreading center out there along the ocean oceanic crust. And um, a lot of times we get, uh, well, some magma movement uh, brewing out there uh, in these certain divergent boundaries, but uh, just not 100% certain what exactly is going on out there. I don't know if this is leading to something much bigger as far as a, a larger earthquake or a volcanic eruption. Uh, really no word from USGS on this yet. Uh, I think it's kind of a big deal to see that many earthquakes um and increasing magnitudes as well uh it's hard to say there's a couple different seamounts out here it looks like the minia minia seamount and there's a little one up north as well let's see here yeah i guess where there was one but uh yeah it's just kind of in an odd area and it's just it's not going away uh, these this activity is continuing to increase, and um, again, not for sure what is about to take place or not, or as far as what we should be looking for could be a possibly a bigger earthquake. It could be some type of volcanic activity, but it's something to watch pretty closely um, here in the near future, I believe. Let's check out the uh, regional information again here for this area. Uh, this is a pretty good hot spot area for earthquake activity. Um, and there's a lot, right? Since about 1900 or so, 4.5 um, and above. But for this type of um, multitude of quakes in a short amount of time is one thing. Uh, because if we look back since about 1900, yes, obviously it's peppered with quite a bit of earthquake activity. But man... Oh, we, we've, we've probably seen uh, more earthquakes here within the last week than we have the entire hundred and something years listed here on this map of 4.5 and above. So something big brewing out there in the Atlantic Ocean, folks. Kind of curious to see uh, what maybe your thoughts are on this. Um, I'm sure we have quite a few geology folks here in the um, on the channel. But man, this has just got me puzzled. A lot, a lot going on out there, folks. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and back out of here real quick and see what we got for the rest of the map. So, a little bit of movement down here along the mid Atlantic Ridge, it looks like. Um, this one coming in, uh, looks like earlier yesterday. Uh, not a whole lot going on further south. The South Sandwich Islands, pretty quiet as well. 
Uh, let's see what we got here for the uh, states as far as anything brewing up here. Not a whole lot, it looks like. Um, the Anza area down in Southern California has been uh, shaken pretty good yesterday. Looks like today that activity is continuing along that uh, fault system there. The uh, San Jacinto Vault, I believe that's the Anza section here, yep. Uh, still seeing some activity within the last 24 hours, although it looks like it's a little bit less active today um, compared to yesterday, but still got about 25 earthquakes listed up here on the map. So we'll keep an eye on that area of Southern California. Uh, let's see, let's look our way up north here. Um, a little spotty activity once we get uh, further north, north of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. And um, there's a little earthquake outside of Mount Shasta earlier yesterday. Uh, aside from that, Pacific Coast looks pretty quiet. Um, looks like there was another earthquake out here around the Forks, Washington region, about 40 kilometers deep. Now, this is a uh, Cascadia subduction zone quake due to the depth there of that earthquake. 3.0, not a big one. Uh, but I am kind of watching the activity that we've been seeing here along the uh, Pacific Northwest. We've been looking at quite a bit of trimmer activity. Let me bring up the um, trimmer map here real quick and show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, let's see, I got to bookmark that page. Okay, so this is yesterday. Uh, when I did the update last night, it was about eight, uh, eight something here in central time, six something out on the west coast. So uh, they hadn't put out the PNSN trimmer map for the uh, the day yesterday, but this is the updated map, 227 earthquake or uh, epicenters yesterday. And most of that, again, confined to the Oregon area. I want to bring up the last two weeks here and show you guys the uh, activity that's been kind of ramping up pretty good along this area of the Cascadia. And most of it has been confined to the Oregon area. Look at that. This is, uh, if you look on it, the Cascadia extends kind of up here a little bit and down off the coast into Northern California. So we're looking at the central, south central area of the Cascadia subduction zone itself. And we're getting a whole lot of um, subduction. This is trimmer activity, basically um, uh, between two plates as one subducts under the other. These are not earthquakes, but they are adding strain and further plate tectonic stress upstream as this is happening. But we're also getting some earthquake activity up there in, in Washington along the uh, uh, western portion of Washington. And it's about 40 kilometers deep, it looks like. So there is some um, strain building up there as well. A little bit further upstream, it looks like. Not much. Uh, just above the Tribber level, which is normally about 35, 45 kilometers deep. Some a little bit deeper. Uh, but this one here, a little bit more westward on the map than we would see Trimmer, and a little bit more further upstream. So uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of buildup of earthquake act, uh, earthquake pressure, I should say, in this region. But uh, of course, not to mention the uh, Cascadia subduction zone itself wound up like a spring. Um, so we definitely have to watch that area. That's just a whole lot of Trimmer last two weeks. Look at that. 2,863 uh, 2, epicenters. Again, mostly confined there to the Oregon area. Last two weeks, folks. That's a lot. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, Yellowstone was swarming yesterday and last night. Let's go ahead and see what we got for the latest activity. Bring up the most recent map. Looks like that swarm has somewhat died off here in the area of the uh, northwest corner of the park. This is yesterday and last night. Overnight, or at least early this morning, it doesn't look too active. Got uh, two, two little spikes here of earthquakes listed up here on the graph, but uh, kind of coming and going. Not, uh, not a big earthquake swarm today, but uh, who knows? That could all change, uh, and Yellowstone will definitely uh, swarm as it sees fit. Let's see what else we got uh, up north into the Alaska area. Hopefully I didn't uh, turn up my mic too much here. I've got uh, 
couple comments there last night saying the microphone volume is pretty low. But if you look up here on the map, or at least on this uh, mic graph here, we're, uh, we're reaching up there. I just don't want to blow up anyone's speaker there. So just chatting normally, and that uh, looks pretty good. So hopefully that helps you guys out there for the uh, microphone volume. Uh, so Alaska seen quite a bit of microquake activity there through the uh, Cook Inlet area. Very quiet along the Western Pacific today. Uh, Japan, Kuril Kamchaka Trench, all super duper quiet. And uh, some movement around the Mariana Trench from uh, yesterday time frame. But overall, most of this activity here is some very old movement. Uh, should be dropping off the 24-hour threshold map here pretty soon. Uh, even down here into the Kermadec Islands, all older activity. Most of the movement today centered around the Atlantic Ocean where uh, all that earthquake activity is kicking up. So again, I kind of want to know what you guys, uh, your thoughts are on this. Kind of an interesting deal here. Uh, what's going to message a uh, geologist about this? Find out, see what they think about it. Uh, I'm sure it's got to be sparking up some conversations um, throughout the uh, uh, throughout the world, far as uh, seismic activity goes, you know, far as general chit chat goes in that department, because that's a lot of activity. Eighty six, uh, wasn't that ninety six? Just like a minute ago, I forgot. Was that eighty six or ninety six? Hmm, is this dropping right before my eyes? I don't know. Seven days. Now it's 85. <laughs> wow, okay. All right, well, either way, almost 90 earthquakes are listed on the uh, map for this area. And that's, uh, that's quite a bit. That's a pretty good swarm for a, uh, a spreading center out there. 6.0 kicked off last night. Since then, looks like we've had a couple more fours in the mix as well. 4.8. So, All right, uh, let's ch give a ch uh, quick check here. Space weather. And I um, believe we kicked up some conditions last night a um, little bit. Although things look to be pretty calm right now. I don't know if that G2 uh, class storm missed us or it's kind of arriving late. But notice here on the chart, things are green and even below green uh, down to the zero on the KP index uh, field. Not a whole lot going on on the auroras. Uh, let's see what we got for speed and density. Notice a huge drop right here uh, within the last few hours of speed. Density is still somewhat elevated, but uh, not for sure what happened here. Kind of looks like a little glitch in the in the data. So hard to say. We'll have to check back on this a little bit later. See if things uh, will prevail as far as the G two class storm goes. Although it's forecasted here to be unsettled over the next couple of nights, it looks like off and on. Uh, no major solar flares popping up currently. We are watching that uh, far side sunspot for potential flaring in the coming days as it rotates into a view. But for now, things are pretty calm there on the, uh, the sun for as any major flare threat goes. All right, guys. Have a good day. We'll catch you a little bit later tonight with a complete update. Got a pretty busy, eventful day ahead. So say, uh, say peace out there, Missy Mimi's. <laughs> Alrighty, take care, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on. Have a good, have a good day.